we just missed it. My father-in-law is uh, texting me about, he goes, hey, have you heard of something called Basecoin Investment Company? They're they're held by Regions Bank, and they want me to send them $2,000 to start. What do you <laughs> oh, think? No. Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining us for the PebCAC podcast, a weekly information security show featuring some all-around good people. It is week 22 of 2024. I'm Chris Louie, and just when I thought I was done with single dad duty, the Louie household is now COVID positive, and I'm back on single dad duty. With me, I have my co-host, BDD, who's caught COVID two times more than me and also raised twice as many kids as me. Again, nobody cares about COVID, you loser, and tell your wife to get off the couch and help you out, man. I didn't even say you're a single dad because she found out about all your indiscretions. Just kidding. There, <laughs> there are none. Chris is an open book. But no, I'm just, uh, I'm actually in the can- uh, Canadian airport. I think it's the Trudeau something. But uh, I just grossed everyone out. There's not much for food here. And I'm on a carnivore diet. And I basically just ate a bowl of cream cheese. And she looks like I'm a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> Rightly so, right? Rightly so, too. I did like cream cheese, but I had it with fork, so I'm classy. Always. For the record, I am still COVID negative and maintain my record of never having caught it. If I manage not to get it this time around, I literally am invincible. Yes, I am invincible. Will you also still CN, CN Chris, CN Chris. And also oblivious, no, Chris. You always take out or miss out on all those people hitting on you. <laughs> no, Glenn, this week he is handling some things, and we wish him well and hope he will be back next week. This week's guest is the return of our fifth host and Kenley, best looking guy I've ever seen in a while, Victor what? DeLuca. I absolutely love it when you call me like that. <laughs> I could get used to it, you know? <laughs> hey, guys. Victor was kind enough to join us at the last minute. We had a guest suddenly become unavailable, and Victor stepped up. You keep saying that. He's starting to believe he is the, uh, the most handsome man in the world, so be careful. You can't pander to his ego. He pandered to his own ego. I, I noticed that because Victor typed this in. While, while I was reading it. So it's just like you, Brian, when you try to trip me up by adding things as I'm reading to the, the Google Doc, I saw Victor do it too, but I didn't fall <laughs> for it. I actually just said it out loud because it wasn't really, really offensive like the stuff you usually add. Victor's a yeah, funny I guy. Him. I got to actually hang out with him here. Yeah, I gave, I gave Brian some time. He, he deserved it. He felt lonely in this uh, barren wasteland that is Canada, so I felt like I had to Make him feel like like he's at home. America's fifty first state. Yeah. Combined, we have decades of information security experience that are here not just to educate but to entertain. We've got four awesome stories for you this week, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. This will be our last podcast for the month of May, so I just want to wish everybody a happy. Asian American Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. This week, we're going to talk about a new low for ransomware gangs, a much needed upgrade for healthcare, for our third topic, what goes around comes around, and close with US Canada talk. You couldn't think of a better way of doing the AAHNPI? What do you mean? I don't know, like, it's just it's a mouthful, bro. Like, you couldn't think of, like, rearranging it somehow? Well, that's the official one. I, I it, it used to be APA Heritage, Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, and then they changed it this year. So the new acronym is Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islanders. They wow. changed it on us. This isn't a word that you made up? No. Or a thing? No, oh. this, is the, this is the official <laughs> government term. I found it on, I don't know, was it HHS website? It, it's one of the government websites. This is the official term that we're using now. Government can't be wrong. All I do know is I plugged it into Scrabble to see if they can make a word out of it and came up with nothing. So they tried <laughs> no hard. No acronyms they... in Scrabble. 
No, but they can make a word out of it, right? Like yeah. H P. Well, oh, technically, this is this is a, an initialism. A yeah. N H P I. Well, that's why I don't want it to be an initialism. I want it to be an acronym, make it easy to remember. Yeah. And her P. And her All right, it's beautiful. But yeah, happy month, guys. Thank, thank you. For our first topic, this will be our ransomware story of the week. Just when you thought ransomware games could not sink to new lows, you hear about a story like this, and it just makes you shake your head. And this isn't some crackpot on Medium writing about this story. It's actually Mandiant's chief technology officer, Charles Carmackle, gave a talk at RSA about how ransomware gangs are exploiting the families of executives to coerce them into paying a ransom. The attackers sim swap the child of an executive they wish to pressure, then use the child's phone number to make threatening calls directly to the executives, creating a highly stressful negotiating environment. By exploiting personal connections, attackers amplify the psychological impact, forcing executives to make decisions under extreme stress. So I remember as like a kid, we, uh, and I'm saying as a kid, when our, our kids were really young, we had to like uh, do something at the school where they take a photo of them and then they, they make like a little card in case they ever go missing. And I remember my daughter saying like, what would happen if, uh, you know, me and Ellie were like kidnapped from the bus stop? And he's like, what do you think would happen? Like, would you guys be scared? Like, do you think it could happen, dad? I said, hundred percent it could happen. Uh, but I'm 100% sure they probably bring you guys back because you're always fighting and driving me nuts. So. <laughs> so he's, uh, Victor's not laughing because he doesn't have kids. I'm still a kid. What do you mean? I hope I don't get sim swapped. <laughs> Let's say but, once you get to our age with the kids, you, you'll you'll laugh at that one. Yeah, but there's a, there's a movement here in Canada, at least in the surrounding schools, about banning cell phones. For, for kids up to, I think it's high school level. So I 100% support that. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, that would that would probably reduce the amount of, of children getting sim swapped. But, um, yeah, I, 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 it's still something that I, 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 don't, I don't know if I fully agree with. I think we have to learn to live in the world that we're going to live in at 18, 19 years old and then just suddenly having access to a cell phone might completely change your world and you might suddenly become addicted but yeah i mean it right somewhere and attackers are willing to do pretty much everything so i yes it's crossing a line but uh i'm pretty sure they've done worse before yeah when has that ever bothered those ransomware gangs ransoming hospitals and being real scumbags and honestly like this whole idea is going to work because if you think about who is and i'm probably gonna get so much trouble for this but like you're, you're targeting, is it, are we, are they targeting executives? Yeah. Executives are usually very close to our grandparents age. So we're going to fall for this a hundred percent. We're like, Oh, Oh no. You may put it, the money in a brown paper bag and leave it by the post office. You got it. That's one thing I was thinking of is why go cause SIM swapping is not, I mean, for some people it might be easy and trivial, but wouldn't it be way easier just to spoof the number? Like just spoof the kid's number when you make the call and then you call from any phone or is it more psychologically threatening to somebody and more harrowing if they actually sim swap them and like their kid no longer has access to their phone number and they have to go through a bunch yeah. of hoops to get their number back. At this point, I think it's just easier just to kidnap the kid and do it the right way. I wonder like how much, <laughs> you probably get in a lot less trouble by just doing the sim swap. Yeah, it's very right. easier. You know, it's not a full scale operation of kidnapping and these guys would have to go from Russia to the U S or something. So it's a I don't want to give the bad guys, I don't want to give the bad guys any ideas, but wouldn't it even be more threatening if you call the kid, keep them on the line for, you know, 30 seconds with whatever you need to record their voice and then use AI to synthesize their voice, to do a deep fake voice for them then you sim swap them you call from the kid's number and play a recording of the kid saying dad please pay the ransom oh, i think it's even easier and i think you only need like five seconds and just go to their tiktok and get the information from there yeah and then replay it yeah have you guys done well, is, yeah. is voice on uh gpt 40 yeah. no i mean it, it recognizes voice yeah 
Yeah, but you can't synthesize a voice in the way you're thinking of doing like deep fake. There's there's plenty of like free or low cost services that will do voice synthesizing, but the major ones like GPT, Chat GPT, and OpenAI, they don't they don't do that. I don't know. I mean, if, if I really got a phone, call, I think the first thing I would do is if I got a phone call from my daughter or from you know some swap, and I think it was the first thing would be to do is like you know find my iPhone, see where they're at. Too bad for Victor if he ever has kids because that won't happen. There's no <laughs> such thing as find my he'll fall victim find my to Android. It. Yeah, with his Windows phone. phone, with his they crack actually screen. released it. <laughs> I actually got an email this morning. I think Android is is fully going. Uh, it's going on board for the find my phone stuff. So I got an email this morning. Uh, it's called localize my phone. And, uh, it's, it's 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 on. It's uh it's going to be available as of I think next month. So, wow. see, yeah. typical Take Android that, always, Apple. always copying from the industry leader Apple. Always one step behind. Yep, always one step behind. <laughs> I wanted to add a thing. Uh, I hope Chris that uh, you know those ransomware gangs are not listening because the advice and the full scheme that you you just explained of how you would do it instead of how they did. Uh, yeah, I just hope they're not listening because you're much, you're much, much, much smarter than them. <laughs> so I said, I don't, like, I don't want to give them any ideas, but He's this like, is how you can make it much worse. Here's a free one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, this guy. <clears throat> Grim well, despite up, the guys. heinous nature of the crime, I think the silver lining here is that ransomware is hitting a wall. Recent reports suggest that law enforcement operations and improvements in IT security and backups have caused ransom payments to plummet to a multi-year low. When criminals have to resort to things like threatening the families of their victims, you know they are getting desperate. I think it's just probably they... easier to do, right? All the customers in the world have Z-Stacks so that are just protected. It's an obvious, <laughs> obvious problem. Right? Just go no way, point. no way for them to get in now. Yeah. <laughs> plugged all the security holes dude i think i told i know i've told you guys about this but i do have a lutron smart hub that is now six months it's been trying to phone back home and pull down a piece of known malware from downloads.lutron.com i think or some other some variation of it but it's definitely their lutron website and they still have a patch i have no idea who to contact you report so your security team I, I yeah i've gone on and i tried to like make uh, mention of it like on their you know uh they didn't really have like a, a security thing but i, I forget what it was I, I found something i i relayed the information but it went missing find their CISO on linkedin find their CISO on linkedin and uh hit them up or her or they hit they up hit them up <laughs> all right hit them up like tupac all right i like it i'll try <laughs> that that's up. a good idea Maybe maybe I can roll, like I can uh, parlay a sale out of this. Maybe we can make Lutron a customer. Booyah. Good. Get that upsell. For our second topic, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, or HHS, is launching a $50 million program to fund cybersecurity tools to protect hospitals from attacks. And this is one of those stupid acronyms that they create the acronym and they try to make the words words spell it out so get this it's called the universal patching and remediation for autonomous defense program so that spells out the word upgrade program aims to secure whole systems and networks of medical devices to ensure solutions can be employed at scale this act comes on the heels of two recent high profile ransomware attacks that massively disrupted healthcare, at least here in the u.s with change health and ascension health it's a step in the right direction, but it's also too little too late. I think it's going to take more than $50 million in software and hardware to stop hospitals from getting ransomed. If you look at Change Healthcare, their parent company, United Health Group, had revenues last year in excess of $378 billion, and they still could not find and shut down a Citrix box that had single-factor authentication turned on. $50 million can buy a lot of YubiKeys, but security has to be baked into the culture. What vendor do you think is pandering to the U.S. government? Like, I'll sell you all this stuff for like fifty million dollars. What a small it's Microsoft, like that's, right? 
what 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 the, we're gonna take you to a an, an M5 license? Did they have like a healthcare license? H5 maybe? H5 maybe, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, fifty million dollars like a drop in the bucket. Maybe they're just be focused on just the giants out there, but still, I bet you United Health Group like fifty million is probably maybe they're spending a year on IT, right? What do you guys think? It's like a rounding error for them. Yeah. So I thought that at first too, fifty million dollars with how many hospitals? That's not much for each hospital, but. If you read the details of it, they're so they're funding fifty million to do a study, and the study is supposed to produce a result of things like s- software development life cycle, supply chain protection, auto patching, thing, things like that. create a framework that they can bro, build. Bro, around. I am doing this. Brian Beach Incorporated. I'm going to use Chat GPT <laughs> to spit out a little framework for healthcare. <laughs> And I am done. I'm gonna like, you know what? I'm gonna make a little. Hey Siri, set a reminder to get rich or die trying. <laughs> or this die is, trying. This is going to be free money for somebody, guys. Why? Might as well be us. Except for you, Victor. You know what I mean. <laughs> That's about five hundred million Canadian. Do you, yeah, do you fifteen think... million USD. That's a lot of rupees. <laughs> we'll be able to pay but our to ransom. I, I don't get it. They're funding a program to basically tell the guys across the U.S. to start patching in hospitals like that. That how how are you expecting basically. this to make a difference? Like they they already know they need to patch. That's not like it's not something that's hidden. They already know how to patch. They, it's just there's a fundamental problem much larger than that. It's there's a reason why they can't patch or they have a hard time patching. Right, so. I, I think it has to come from the doing this from you guys. I'm going to say produce a 500-page <laughs> dissertation. 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 <laughs> hey, I got it before you did, B-word. So, man, this is going to be awesome. One of the specific call-outs that HHS does is they say when you have a vulnerability in a consumer device, you an iPhone, a Sonos speaker, Google whatever calling out so they, can spin, they can spin up a patch relatively quickly not overnight but relatively quickly when you have a medical device that has a glaring vulnerability in it, it can take months or years before they can develop a patch and i i wish we had someone in healthcare on that could maybe tell us why but it, it just seems like it's either because their qa is so rigorous like if you if somebody's pacemaker gets a bad update like you can be in really big trouble or if it's just that's that's how things move in the medical industry. They they they're not software companies, so it does take them five months to crank out a patch. And and, and when you think about it, change healthcare is only one out of the how many different you know healthcare companies that operate in the U.S. That's just one. That's like and and they had revenue in excess of three hundred seventy eight billion dollars by the United Health Group. So. I, I think the fact that you guys are so decentralized in the U.S. compared to Canada, which has a single sort of, <laughs> I was going to say single point of failure, but, you know, we don't have a lot of private hospitals that are mostly not legal. So it's, it's you guys have a plethora of different levels of security and there's not a lot of uh, incentives because there's a, they see a dollar sign behind it. So unless they think that cyber risk is real, they may never invest in cybersecurity because they may not really care about it. They care about the top line, bottom line. And we're always saying that like, maybe this will be the watershed moment. Maybe this will be the wake up call, but we've been saying that for decades now and everyone's still asleep at the wheel. So maybe this will help. Looking like a true communist, Victor. Good job. (laughs) <laughs> one interesting take on this is we're looking at, at this from the defense side having multi-factor authentication having self-updating software i was thinking why don't we flip it we'll flip the script i have a budget of 50 million dollars and i will go to mandiant's red team i'll go to a really highly reputable red team and tell them you have blanket immunity I'll pay 50 of you $1 million each. Do your worst against these threat actors. Why aren't we hacking these guys back like offensive security? Why are we always playing defense? 
like oh, we're yeah. going with this, Chris. What should the penalty be? Do we take them to uh, an island where there's no laws to torture them? Maybe like <laughs> Australia was originally? Maybe. Or Guantanamo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys already have one. <laughs> Why do you need a second island? <laughs> You know what? But let's talk real quick, like on um, the the change health thing. So, like, I I know that, that sucked for United Health Group, but I do have to hand it to the hackers that they were just like, "Hey, uh, we don't really want to hurt anybody, right?" Because it is healthcare. So it's almost like they took this morale. And they're just like, "How about we just go over the go after the billing, right?" And that's I think is exactly what they did. So they, they made a lot of money. I guess they do hurt end users with the uh, information being leaked, but that happens all the time anyway. <laughs> so, good for them. They got paid. Just kidding. That's terrible. I hate them. My social security number is 100% on the dark web. I just signed up for this service, free service to my credit card. I was like, oop, we found your social security number on the dark web. Better put a credit freeze in. I'm thinking, of, I think by now most Americans have their social security number published on the dark web, especially after Equifax. Yeah. I wonder, so are you going to do the, the lock on it? Or are you going to get like an IRS pin? Or are you not worried about it? Yeah, it's, I forgot, there's there's a difference between like a freeze and a hold or something. There's one where you can like freeze and unfreeze it. So yes, I will be, I will have that if it's not already in place already. Uh, and I think there's like a different one, like a credit freeze. I don't remember, like a credit hold where it's just like impossible to get any new lines of credit. I don't remember the difference, but if you just freeze it and unfreeze it, and it's required by law now that it's free to freeze and unfreeze it at will, then go go that route. I love free. I'm sure we're paying for it on taxes. Yeah, I have to put a hold on mine. The second one uh, is I, I, had a, I had a person abuse it last November. So uh, <clears throat> they called a, a, a bank that I didn't do business with. And they created an account with my uh, social insurance number, which is the equivalent of your social security number. And then they said, uh, or they said I was a doctor, a dentist. And then they were trying to take out a loan, a $150,000 loan. Uh, and it's crazy. They never had to use any, any of my information. I, I didn't know other than the information they found on the web. Um, it's just crazy. I, I found out three months after when I saw that there was a credit hit on my credit report, which I never look at because I, I never need to. But yeah, I had to call the bank and make them cancel the credit card and line of credit and everything they had open. So yeah, it happens. I mean, you're not a dentist. I, I wish. I wish. <laughs> you're not like Glenn. I'm Glenn not like dentist. Glenn. <laughs> I don't know that I would actually want. Would you want to be a dentist? I don't know, man. People's I think so. I gross. Think, yeah, but it's, you know, for, I'm a cyclist, right? I have a bike in the background and there's always this joke about dentists working three hours in the morning and then just going for a bike ride in the afternoon and making a bunch of money and having a good life. So I guess that's a I'm stereotype. Sure, but Yeah, I think you can make more money where, right where you're at. I'd say so. And then you don't have to rack up massive student loan debt for dental school i don't know is dental school free there <laughs> yeah i was gonna say it's it's not that expensive so <laughs> the return right. on investment here. is probably a bit better <laughs> here there's figures. no way there's yeah. no way it's free basic uh, not, nothing is free is. but much cheaper yeah how much does it get a doctorate in? i actually don't know because i never went to dental school but i would say it's probably i don't know 10 grand a year maybe yeah Man, you're researching it back you pay, you pay for it in other ways, though, with those 60% taxes there. Just saying. There's no free lunch. All right. For our third topic, we are revisiting a story from back in March on episode 153, where we talked about the incognito darknet market. We talked about how the owner of incognito exit scammed all of its users stealing all their Bitcoin and then proceeding to extort them by asking for payment or else he would release the details of all their transactions and conversations from the platform. The owner was asking for amounts between $100 for individual users up to $20,000 for sellers to protect all of their customers. We said there was no honor among thieves. Well, now we're saying what goes around comes around. 
the owner and extortion artist of Incognito Market, has been arrested in New York. Yeah, we're losing. The illegal drug market was used to sell more than $100 million worth of narcotics, including over 1,000 kilos of illicit drugs. Rui Siang Lin is the alleged mastermind behind the Darknet marketplace and is thought to have made about $5 million in commissions. If convicted, Rui faces at least two life sentences. No word on how the feds caught on, but the criminal complaint says that law enforcement agencies executed search warrants on three servers back in July 2022 and August 2023. Dude, why was this guy going after people for 20 grand? He's $100 million worth of narcotics. Like, is, is he publicly traded? Is this, he's, he has to report his numbers and grow the business year over year? Jesus Christ. A thousand kilograms. That's 2,200 pounds of drugs that's a that's a small car in the u.s and he was moving that the hell out of here wow I mean, he may have been trying to sell incognito dark hit, dark hit market to uh to a private equity right he wanted a better uh you want to uh, <laughs> improve the numbers for the sale i just, no, I just see, scammed him what was that uh, wall street wolf of wall street and just, i imagine he was just like gotta get those numbers up Beating his chest yeah. yeah those are rookie numbers those are rookie numbers, dude. I, I want to find out more about this guy. He's in two life two life sentences. He's probably got a puddle of cash. And uh, yeah, what do you do with all that now that you're been locked up? Is there a picture of him? Right? Just... Maybe there's a mugshot. It's crazy to think that you know a hundred million dollars worth of narcotics, including a thousand kilograms of illicit drugs in Canada is probably legal, right? Because I'm guessing a bunch of it was probably, you know, marijuana or some of the, the of drugs that are legal. Methamphetamine. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Maybe not legal in not, Canada then. Not those, yeah. <laughs> I think the legalization of cannabis, I, I'm sure like those darknet marks don't have to deal in that quite as much. It's more the hard drugs. It'll be heroin, cocaine, fentanyl, meth. This guy... Oh, is Chris's cousin. Look how much they look alike. <laughs> I didn't know any better. Oh man, they do look alike. <laughs> Dang. And it's not even because you're yeah, Asian. Like literally you guys look alike. It's like if like you can grow a mustache. It's like the Timu, uh, Timu version. Yeah. <laughs> Timu versus Louis. Guys, send me that in the group chat. I'm, I'm going to make that our picture of the week. Okay. Damn. What an idiot. <laughs> the, the other thing is prison might be better for this guy because now that he's been outed and he stole a bunch of money and tried to extort a bunch of money from known drug dealers jail might be safer for him yeah but it doesn't matter you know it's been proven before especially in new york you can get epstein's for sure <laughs> like come on That's guys yeah, no it's called it's clinton accidental stabbing epstein. yeah clinton <laughs> Or McAfee. McAfee, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Wasn't you, Chris? John. No, I think there was somebody. Wasn't it you that was saying that there's a rumor that he, that he, like, he faked his death and he's actually alive? Oh, I'm sure there is. He's hanging with Tupac. Is that you that said that? No. They definitely <laughs> said he was so. hanging out with Tupac. All right. So I'll have to go back <laughs> and check my sources. <laughs> yeah. So, first of all, you're extorting drug dealers you would think your opsec would be a little bit better and then on top of this this guy travels to new york it, it's like what are you thinking if i had five million dollars that i made from illegal drug sales i would be nowhere near the u.s or any kind of extradition country uh, well from? maybe originally maybe he just came in as an illegal immigrant he's just like bro i heard you cross the border you get a 10 grand visa card <laughs> out of three plane rides <laughs> in new york city He's like, I'm going to clean up my act. It's the land of the brave. I am in a, I'm going to become the next techie. Or maybe he's going to ma in male fashion. I have no idea what he's doing in New York. Maybe his goals were completely different. He just missed it. He wanted to buy a Gucci belt, Brian. Where, Gucci where belt was makes he sense. From? Was, was he or yeah, originally know. from the U.S.? Or did he just, you know, popped on plane and decided that New York was going to be his, his state of residence? 
I don't know. We have to look into this and see because I, I think they nabbed him at the airport as he was trying to flee the country. But like I said, what was he doing here in the first place? Why wasn't he flagged on the way in? Unless they didn't know who this guy was until he came. Well, he was from Taiwan. Well, he's Taiwanese. We assume he's there, but he could also speak English fluently. Are you guys like reading his bio on the spot right now? Yeah, we both are sharing Google results. Uh, and he was young. He was 23. So. I like how you said I guess he said smart. He's already dead. Or, or... He's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dead man walking. Well, just like Victor said, if, if he's not dead now, he's not going to be alive for very long if he's, he's made a lot of enemies. Can I get promoted like to a uh, drug addict in prison? Just like that guy from Alpha Bay. I think he ran Alpha Bay, he got caught in Thailand, and then he was also found dead in his cell. Allegedly suicide, but he was found dead in his cell. He was suicided. I wonder what Ross Ulbricht's up to, the Pirate Bay guy, if he's still around, or if he's just serving out his life sentence in peace somewhere. I should look it up. There's a big movement, right, for his release. I, I remember reading some people say, you know, what he did was... Yes, illegal, but not unethical. And he was just a libertarian trying to host the marketplace, and people misused that marketplace. And there's actually Safe a real space. movement for his release. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, him and Assange. You got to free Assange. Yeah, but Assange has some different. <laughs> uh, he was accused <laughs> of a lot of different things, right? Not just, you know, you know not, what, not just WikiLeaks, a lot of other unsavory things. Yeah, I, I watch a special about Ross Ulbrich on, I forget what it, what streaming service it was, but the, his family, Ross's family, claims that there were some errors in the investigation, some errors in the prosecution, and that there this guy got railroaded, essentially. But interesting theory. What's worse, being railroaded or trained? The I think the thing that Ross Ulbrich mis was the mistake he made, and what I think a lot of people like when I read about like the raids, they got the guy from Alpha Bay and they got the guy from other places. They they always what they all have in common. Um, same thing with the guy that did the Bitfinex hack. They all have their laptops open and unlocked because you know with with Linux they have e is it Eex the encryption system that's unbreakable. They said it has to be unlocked and it has to be you know, on so that they can take a snapshot of the hard drive before it gets encrypted. There's something online. I can't remember what it's called, but it's, it's sort of like at the treadmill at the gym, you know, you have to clip this thing onto your clothes. So if you fall off the treadmill, the treadmill in theory is supposed to turn off. So it doesn't run you over. They have this thing that plugs into the USB port that if this thing is ever removed from the USB port, it either shuts down your computer or it, it locks the screen. So why didn't any of these guys do that? Like if you're running, these operations and the only evidence that could convict you is on this laptop why wouldn't you do that to your laptop to you yank this usb cord out like if somebody tackles you then it automatically locks your you computer. need to stop talking dude you're giving away so much free info <laughs> that you missed your calling <laughs> apparently uh, opsec for criminals 101 <laughs> chris is called improvata is what you're thinking so a little plug in or a little plug for imp improvata here today and that's not it. That's only used yeah. for healthcare workers and pads in and out of Yeah, the <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, there's. A, I think it's like a bash script that you run, and then you can pl just plug in this USB device. Anytime it's unplugged, it automatically shuts down your computer or shuts down or, or locks your system. I think you probably use like bad USB or something to code that and just plug it in. Yeah. 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 Use a flipper. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, see? You never catch me, Copper. No, oh, this guy's about to have a really bad day. We'll have to follow. I'll set a Google alert for it, and then we'll see inevitably when he's found dead in his cell somewhere. Let's do a GoFundMe for him, and then if he gets out somehow, then he has to give us the $5 million. <laughs> Just defense fund. Yeah. Pretty sure with this $5 million, he can he can pay a good lawyer. Okay. Too little, can't too get late. Johnny Cochran, but Wait. maybe he'll get somebody. Did he get uh, served for two years or uh, two licenses or 
He's uh, like, or that if, could be the worst. He's if, up for, it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The man. trafficking and the wire fraud and everything that they said like, he's that's convicted. Some Saudi yeah. Arabia justice right there, man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll the, open and the shut case. Yeah. For drugs. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get to keep his head if he serves his time here, though. For our last topic, and it'll be a rotating topic every week. This week, we're going to talk about the differences between the U.S. and Canada. Victor, you came to the U.S. two weeks ago. And you actually got to come to my house and come hang out for a bit. And Brian, you're in Canada right now. You got to see Victor for a bit up there. What are some differences you're noticing, even though we're neighbors and Canada's America's hat? Go ahead and go what first. is wrong with San Francisco prices? I've, I I remember I bought two pizzas. My my friend and I we bought a pizza each and in Canadian dollars with tips and the five or seven percent San Francisco whatever fee that they just slap on top. I, I think tax. I paid a hundred and twenty dollars yep. Canadian for two pizzas. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It was a, it was a decent restaurant, but still, that is just it's unmanaged. It's it's out of. I, I don't even understand it. I think the prices are just. On, they're, they're not correlated to the service or the product that you're getting to a certain extent. It's just nonsense. Definitely depends on the area, too. If you're in a rough area, I don't think you'll be being, paying 120 bucks for a pizza, but in a nice area, it's it's the all the requirements that they have to make, all the minimum wage laws, all the mandatory sick leave, all this, all that, that raises costs. And then security. There's actually a food hall in San Francisco. They had to shut down because they're spending so much on just security, just keeping them safe. That they said it's, this is unprofitable. We're just going to close instead. Yeah, yeah, and the homelessness problem is just it's it's bad. It's I haven't seen it as bad anywhere else in the world. Um, it's just highly concentrated. Even Calcutta. Well, I haven't been there, but <laughs> <laughs> and they're super active. Like you know, in, in Montreal, there's the winter, and in the winter, they obviously. They you know, they're inside or they try to find some place to hide. In San Francisco, I guess it's too nice of a weather because they're just outside dancing at 3 a.m. They're yelling, they're running, they're they're very active. It's, uh, you know, a lot of them obviously are on drugs, I think. But still, that's that impressed me. I haven't seen, you know, homeless or, or people on, you know, under the influence of drugs as much and as active as that. Bro, you must not walk around your own city because that's all. That was the one thing, the, the parallel that I thought was the same between San Francisco and Montreal. Is they're, they're homeless druggies. And I will say, I was in San Francisco for four days. I was in Montreal for four days. And you want to know what? I, re- I forcefully removed one drug addict homeless person and guess which uh, country I was in from a convenience store? Canada. Canada, baby. So. <laughs> But did you prefer Toronto or Montreal? That's what we want to know. Which which city is the most fun? I mean, it's hard to say, man. I was I, I wasn't even in Toronto for eighteen hours before I headed over here to Montreal. Yeah, of course, because you don't want to stay longer in Toronto. <laughs> There's nothing to do. Yeah, you know, I think I need to come back and get a, a good feel for it. The the time I was there, I did have, in Toronto, I did have a good time. So, um, I will tell you though. Everything in Montreal is written in French, and I know nothing in French. But everyone here will greet you in French, and then when they realize that you're American, they just talk in English. To the degree when I was at dinner with Victor and his goons, they were going in and out of English and French mid sentence. I would give you an example, but I'm not saying anything in French. But it was just so weird. Like they just like having a conversation, and all of a sudden, like. And that was the first time I got HIV, and then just went back and the next thing, like, what? What just happened? <laughs> I'm like, I'm sure I did not hear that right. No, but the yeah, bilingual in and out. And you, you, it's not pick one and stick with it. It's whatever I feel like. That is that it's is pretty impressive. Trial. I remember. Yeah, you were in my car this morning, right? I was driving you back to the hotel, and 
After breakfast, after yes. breakfast, I should mention, not just driving you back in the morning. But, <laughs> <laughs> but walk of shame, Brian. Walk of shame. Yeah, walk of shame. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> someone called me and I answered in French, and I saw you laughing when I switched to English for like three words and then went back to French. And that's yeah. just the way we we talk here. That's just it's normal. So. It's just expected. That's just normal. It has to be the most feminine language I've ever heard in my entire life. As a rule of thumb, I will never learn how to speak French. And they do say, like, if you're bilingual, there's at least one native language. Like, what language do you think in? So what, that's a good question for Victor. What language are you thinking? Well, I'm, I'm not the best example, but I grew up in a trilingual uh, household. Uh, so I, I would say it depends. Uh, sometimes I, I think in French. Sometimes I think in English. It really depends what I'm with, what I'm doing. Especially at work, you know, a lot of my work is conducted in English. Like the, I, I rarely translate firewall and proxy and server in French, even though I could. They have awful trans- translations, but I mostly write in English, and then sometimes I'll translate back to French. Or, yeah. So just like how people can switch languages mid sentence, you can switch languages mid thought. For sure. He's what we call a switch hitter. If you catch my drift. He doesn't get it. It's a baseball term. It has nothing to do with anything else. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, it's just like you guys hold the World Series in a single country, right? Uh, Same thing with Miss Universe. (laughs) Yeah, we have the Blue Jays. You got the Raptors. Yeah, the World Series Series is is not the MLB. Yeah, yeah, but the Blue Jays could make it if they didn't suck. Yeah, yeah, I guess. (laughs) <laughs> what other things did you realize that was uh, weird about the U.S. or just different? Nick? I'm curious about portion size because everybody around the world says the you know, Americans are all fat and we're overweight, and it's because of our gigantic portion size. And we had a visitor from Australia, and this is maybe ten years ago, and he says, "I want a small drink." He goes to a fast food restaurant, orders a small drink, and the size of our small drink is like an extra large in his country. I'm just curious on on portion size between the two. I honestly, I think it used to be worse. I remember going to New York uh, maybe 10, 12 years ago, and I remember the portions at McDonald's and Burger King just being absolutely massive. But I, I wasn't surprised two weeks ago in San Francisco. So maybe it's like a regional thing. Maybe it's because I didn't go to a fast food, but I think portions were reasonable. Um, you know, I, I I'm. Uh, I'm uh, very. I pay a lot of attention to what I eat, so I I, uh, I try not to eat too much. But I would say I think fast food is the worst. Uh, the fast food that you guys get, the quality is really subpar. I think in general, that's the standard of, of fast food. We don't have Tim Hortons here, Victor. Yeah, but they're awful because Bur- Burger King bought Tim Hortons. That's why it's awful now. Uh, speaking of which, I thought Tim Hortons would be a steakhouse, and it was not. Just I don't know what <laughs> he had like, you know, like had some like <laughs> microwave pe- like microwave pizza in the window. And what the hell is this? Kept walking. So that was another thing. Uh, I'm oh, with you. So the portion brought you to. Yeah. So real quick on the the portions, right? I would say, I think they're pretty much the exact same as the U.S. The only difference is the drinks are smaller. Like. If I was at lunch and ordered a drink, it's like alcohol drinks are all the same. But if you're ordering like iced tea or soda, uh, they're pretty much a lot smaller than what you would get in the U.S. And yeah, the steakhouse you took me to was amazing. Thanks for having me. Thanks for inviting six people and then asking me to pay. That was really cool of you. <laughs> yeah, you're we're the highest out. ranking, <laughs> highest ranking in the room. <laughs> That's true. That's the rule. I don't know about those guys. General. Fourteen hundred dollars later. Of- Speaking of steakhouse, how do they measure the steak size there? Because like when you, in the U.S. it's a ten ounce fillet or it's a thirty two ounce prime rib. They don't have ounces there. What? How do they measure steaks there? Oh, you'd be surprised. It's all ounces. Just like when I went to the gym. It's not, it's not a point two five kilo steak. No, dude. I went into the gym and I was like, I was like looking at the weights and some. I grabbed something and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so. Why am I weak today? And I had to ask Victor. I'm like, 
are the weights here in kilograms or in, in pounds? Because <laughs> I'm not doing what I think I should be doing. And he said pretty much everything there, at least in Montreal, right, is all pounds, not kilograms. Yeah, or uh, kilos. 75, 25. 75% would be pounds and 25% would be kilos. So you it's can still confusing. order a four ounce filet in Canada and they would know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for me, yeah. Four ounce. No, we we don't me? calculate it. It's a petite, <laughs> petite filet. Four no, ounce. We don't you know calculate it. beavers. That's like one bite for Brian. So this place that you took me to, they had all kinds of different options. And the guy's like, oh, let me see. He's like, we have a, uh, you know, it's like, it's like I want a, the, the tomahawk for two. I didn't actually get that. He's like, oh, we got a ribeye, like a big one. He's like, we have like a 29 ounce and a 40 ounce. And like, he's like, what do you want? I was like, ah, this is 29 ounce. That took some work to get down. I'm not going to lie. But I did. I ain't no quitter. Got to go with the 40. Those are rookie numbers. Get the 40 ounce next time. Let's see you eat a 29 ounce steak. And <laughs> guess what Victor had? A bowl of mushrooms yeah, the, and french fries. The toaster? No, he's like, Mr. I'm going to watch what I eat. It's like shovels. Fistfuls of French fries in his face, like popcorn. I'm like, why? Just enjoy steak, brother. No, no, I had veggies before, but honestly, Brian, I was surprised that you had some some problem with the the, the steak. Is uh, you know, you're usually used to a lot, uh, lot, a lot of. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Meat lover. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, no. You've eaten bigger meats before, you know. <laughs> No, that's tomahawks are no joke. Like the the did I have the tomahawk in Flagstaff with you, Chris? You did, yeah. You had the yeah, tomahawk was, too, and you finished it. Yeah, that was smaller than what I had there. Okay. Yeah, I think it was because of the tomahawk tomahawk had they were counting the weight of the bone. And I think this ribeye was like no bone, so it was just pure meat. Yeah, or maybe I don't know. It was it was weird. It was like pre-cut. Yeah. I'm like I'm a man. Let me cut my own steak, please. Weirdos. And the tomahawk and flagstaff came with lots of sides, and you didn't touch any of the sides. The uh, oh, another little thing that I noticed is that uh, Montreal steak seasoning is actually called Montreal steak spice here, but it's not spicy at all. So seasoning versus spice, I guess that's yeah. just a regional language thing. Yeah. And then last one I'll give you guys is that I think everyone, Toronto or Montreal, like everybody's super friendly. More so when I'm wearing a suit, a little less so when I'm walking around with a shirt that says embrace violence. But, you know, <laughs> your, your mileage will vary. For science. Yeah, for science. Well, we continue to get great comments about our dad joke of the week. Dad joke of the week. This week, our guest Victor is up. All right, I have a special for you guys. Have you heard the latest about the president of Iran? I heard What's he had that? information about mismanagement of Boeing. I hope nothing <laughs> happens to him. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something about uh, Hillary Clinton there. <laughs> <laughs> Another good way to not meet a very good end. I won't. I don't want the algorithm demonetizing us. Yeah, I would say that that was a great joke, but not a dad joke. That's true. Maybe because it was oblivious at the end. Yeah, you did well. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not a dad yet, so you gotta but cut you know me some slack. Seven years, not a dad. Who knows? Victor did a great job of hiding his uh, girlfriend from me, though. He's afraid I would yeah. out him. Yeah, yeah she just dramatic. goes to a different school. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know her. Yeah, we've never seen her in a picture on anything. The background on his on his not iPhone, his Android is the mountains instead of his girlfriend. So the verdict is still out on there. She <laughs> probably doesn't exist, just like birds. Yeah, <laughs> Bird, birds aren't real. Birds aren't real. That Neither is five G. in the algorithm. <clears throat> All right, to wrap things up. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Hospitals are getting a Band-Aid for security. The owner of Incognito Dark Market learned what goes around, comes around, and blame Canada. That's all I have for this week. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Find us all on LinkedIn. Links will be in the description. 
follow us on Instagram at Pepcat Podcast. Thank you to all our listeners and subscribers who raised five stars the iTunes store on Spotify and left us a review. We appreciate you all spreading the word to help grow the show. The best way to find us is to search for the Pepcat Podcast on your favorite podcast listening app. For my co-host Brian Beach and our guest Victor DeLuca, I'm Chris Louie. Thanks for listening. See you all next weekend. As always, have a nice day. I'm Felicia. Have a nice day.